Hey everyone, Casey Scanlon here. Gonna give you a quick Lake of the Ozarks fishing report. It's the last week in June. Uh, the lake level is at full pool. Water temps are, uh, you know, really creeping up there. They're low 80s right now. And, um, you know, the fish are really biting. So the last couple weeks we've had a, a lot of current coming through the lake, uh, really visible current. Uh, a lot of times we don't see that, but we've been getting a lot of generation through both Bagnell Dam and Truman Dam. So. Um, as, as you go further up the river, that current is a lot more noticeable. It was pretty swift out on the main, uh, main lake or main river, whatever you want to call it, last week. Um, so I've been fishing all up and down the lake, but as you got up there around, you know, 60, 70 mile marker, it was, it was very uh, visible current, you know, a couple mile an hour on the main river. And, uh, you know, that really positions those fish. They like to tuck just out of the current. So it was putting them on current breaks, eddies and things like that and um, you know the lake level has been at full pool so that shallow bite's been really good lake lake wide you know we've got uh, all sorts of cover in the water from lay downs to uh, underwater rocky points to um, you know even uh, bank grass like water willow a lot of that showing up in the lake and there's fish around all of it all those shallow boat docks that are usually sitting on the the bank in the springtime are all now uh, have water underneath them and there's a lot of fish just swimming around and, and biting right now so uh, you know with uh, on the lower end of the lake you know the water level is a little bit clearer those fish are a little bit deeper typically and the bite's been really good we've been catching them on a variety of techniques down lake uh, so but had the opportunity to fish quite a bit of the lake from uh, mid lake which i can cons consider around uh, hurricane deck the mouth of the niangua's lynn creek uh, areas like that. We fished around the glaze all the way up to the dam and even the 60, 70 mile mark of the last couple weeks. So I'll try to give you a rundown of kind of what's going on everywhere. So we'll just start, you know, kind of lower into the lake. Of course, uh, that section of the lake, um, you know, a lot of fish uh, live out deeper there. It's just generally a little bit clearer. So, um, you know, uh, based, on, based on that, you know, we're going to start out uh, fishing, you know, bluffs, uh, deep points, uh, brush piles, cables coming off of these docks, and uh, you know a lot of fish still are living up shallow. So top water bite's been really fun in the mornings if you can get out there early. Uh, baits like uh, this little junior spook has been good, full size spook. We've caught a lot of fish on a pop R, even a buzz bait. So uh, look for some schooling activity. It's uh, getting that time of year where they're gonna start uh, slacking the current off a little bit. And I read or uh, looked at the generation uh, for the next couple days. They're gonna run some current through the lake and then over 4th of July weekend, they're really gonna slow that down uh, going into next week. So uh, who knows how much current we're gonna have in the month of July. But when they slow that current down, you know, those deeper fish that were relating to points or ledges, things like that, they're really going to start spreading out. Those schools aren't going to be bunched up and those fish are going to utilize stuff like brush piles, um, you know, uh, cables on the docks. They're going to slide up underneath those boat docks um, and, and the shallow game should just pick up a little bit. So look for a lot more fish to start schooling, things like that. And then right now, you know, if you're targeting bluffs, uh, bluffs have been a real uh, good area for, for us lately. There's a lot of irregularities on those bluffs and those fish can kind of duck out of that current and they can move up and down in the water column real easily. So look for irregularities on the bluffs, um, things like that. We've been throwing a lot of the jig. So this is my uh, Trophy Bass Company jig here. This is a 5 8 ounce uh, green pumpkin in color with the uh, Tackle HD T-Craw trailer, really awesome trailer, a lot of action. So I've uh, been getting a lot of bites on that around the bluffs, it's really easy to fish. Uh, that's one of my go-to baits, um, no matter where I'm at, and especially here at the Ozark. So I got that on a seven foot six, six gill siren uh, rod, uh, heavy action, and then a wraith reel. I want a really fast gear ratio for all of my bottom baits. This is an eight to one gear ratio. So uh, really great combination. If you haven't checked out the six gill stuff, do it. Man, they got some awesome uh, products. Those reels are um, uh, amazing. They can cast across the lake. Really great for throwing a deep crankbait. Uh, but they run a buy one, get one sale all the time uh, on rods and reels. I think they currently got one through the end of June. So if you jump on it, you can get uh, some really good prices on some great rods and reels. 
but uh, the jig's been really good, always good. And uh, throwing that on 20 pound uh, Bass Pro Shops, 100% fluorocarbon. So try to get a away with as big a line as possible on, on all my baits. The shaky head, you know, with either, uh, this is a Tackle HD, what do we call it? Uh, sweet Sticks Worm. Uh, that's been really good. You know, on all my guide trips, we're usually throwing, uh, you know, spinning rods a lot of the time. We've got a lot of people new to the sport, a lot of people that haven't uh, experienced fishing a whole lot. So we throw the spinning rods a lot. We're throwing the six gill uh, siren rods, seven foot two, medium heavy, uh, 10 pound braid, 10 pound leader a lot of the times. And uh, this bait right here, along with some other finesse techniques like a weighted wacky worm and uh, things like that, really produce a lot of fish on our trips and some really big ones. So uh, don't forget the finesse tactics. They've been really good as well. Uh, with all the current, they've been pushing a lot of fish shallower. So I've been throwing a deep diving crankbait. I got this on a seven foot six heavy action uh, cranking rod from six gill, uh, six three to one gear ratio, 12 pound line. And this rod, uh, you want a long rod, this seven foot six, you can really launch it out there. You wanna get your bait down as long or as, as deep as possible. So a long cast is really, really important. And uh, this thing will cast it across the lake. Great combo for getting it out there. Uh, you, just wanna, you just want a bait that's gonna to touch the bottom, no matter what that is, whether you're fishing 30 foot deep, 10 foot deep, you want a crank bait that's gonna to touch the bottom uh, and make as much bottom contact as possible. So just select, uh, based on the spot that you're fishing, select the crankbait that's gonna dive a little bit deeper than, than what you want it to. That way you can maintain bottom contact. But uh, as far as colors on that, shad patterns, uh, chartreuse patterns when you get in some dirtier water, crankbait's been working uh, lake wide. Uh, but this lower end of the lake from the dam, let's say to the glaze, uh, has been really good. We've been catching a, a lot of them uh, shallow in the mornings, moving out a little bit deeper in the afternoons. Um, getting a, Early in the morning, uh, we're getting a lot of bites on the 10 inch worm. Uh, this is actually a little bit bigger than this, than that. This is the Tackle HD hog monster worm. This is a June bug color, uh, throwing it on a 3 8 ounce weight. A lot of times these fish are a little bit shallower uh, in the mornings around points. Uh, secondary points have been really good. These fish have been, uh, you know, I, I mean, with as heavy a current as we've got, they're trying to duck out of the current just a little bit. So secondary points, um, you know, brush piles, little pieces of cover uh, around those points or on the inside of them have been really good uh, in, early in the mornings with that worm and a jig. Uh, you know, um, Swim bait bite hasn't been very good for me all year for whatever reason, haven't been throwing it a lot. Like I said, on those guide trips, usually I'm running the trolling motor and telling them where to cast and uh, we, we throw a lot of finesse techniques. So haven't thrown it a ton, but when I've been out there, it's been fairly lackluster, uh, catching some fish on it, catching a lot of whites and hybrids on it. Uh, whites and hybrids are starting to school. If you like that kind of thing, uh, that can be really fun. Trolling crankbaits, top water in the mornings and evenings. Um, you know, a variety of uh, little spoons, stuff like that's really gonna catch those, those white bass and hybrids. And that's been a great way to get out there and have some fun. Uh, as we move down to the lake, down the lake, the fish just get shallower in nature. You know, so when we get around Hurricane Deck Bridge area, um, on up the river, you know, look for those shallow patterns to be a little bit better. We've been throwing uh, the Tackle HD uh, buzz bait quite a bit. 3 8 ounce. I got a Hayabusa uh, trailer lock with a Hayabusa trailer uh, hook on there, and that thing's awesome. You know, it stays pinned where you're not going to hook the uh, trailer that you're using on your buzz bait. I like to use a trailer uh, on a buzz bait because it gives them a good target to aim for, and also it's a little bit heavier where I can cast that bait more accurately and easily. It helps skip it up underneath limbs and boat docks, things like that if you want to do it. So uh, buzz bait's been good up the river. Uh, we've been throwing a spinner bait up there as well. Like I said, a lot of visible current. So square bill crankbaits, um, you know, your, your mid diving crankbaits around that hurricane deck bridge area have been really, really good, um, both for white bass and for, um, large mouth and spotted bass as well. So those fish are, the current's a little more visible. So a lot of them don't want to get right in that direct current. So they'll be using, you know, little places that create a small eddy, you know, right behind the points, um, you know, utilizing some of these boat docks, 
uh, you know, and bank cover that's that's situated on the main river that, you know, like a lay down tree that's going to block the current. Those fish are going to be behind that or closer to the bank where the current's just a little less swift. So, uh, but like I said, you know, they're going to slack that current off and those fish are going to go to cover. So look for boat docks, um, look for lay downs, look for brush piles to start producing more and more uh, in the coming weeks. You know, those, uh, the top water bite is going to pick up. The schooling activity is going to pick up. Uh, you're going to see a lot more fish schooling around in the early mornings. And that's a great way to have fun. Uh, just look for the bird activity, look for fish busting the surface. And, uh, you know, you should, uh, should run into that if you cruise down the lake in the mornings here in the next couple weeks. So, uh, when they shut off the current, the fish tend to suspend a little bit which makes, makes the boat docks really good. When I'm up the river, I love keying in on shallower boat docks, you know, whether that's on the main lake, in the backs of creeks and coves, it doesn't matter. Um, you know, I, I try to cover some water, look for uh, boat docks to have some cover around them and go from there, try to find the, the shad activity. And, uh, you know, I use a lot of history up there as well and just hit docks that have been productive in the past. But uh, lake wide, the dock bite is gonna, keep picking up you know these fish like to suspend underneath the boat docks you know they like to uh, utilize the cover around the docks and the shade and when the they slack off the current that's usually the first place they're going to go to that and some of the brush piles on the lake and there's plenty of brush piles on the lake so you just got to identify um, you know some good ones so creature baits up there have been good always the jig uh, we were actually catching a lot of black and blue jig water was a little bit dirtier i like throwing a black and blue jig so we caught them on that uh, 10 inch worm was productive uh, caught some on the buzz bait like i said uh, pop bar uh, produced some fish up there for us um, but the jig was really good we were casting that on secondary points secondary points seem to be real good in that area of the lake uh, and along with just shallow cover, both on the main river and backs and creeks and coves, just covering some water and trying to find some active fish. You know, up there, you kind of got to hunt and peck a little bit more in between bites. The fish aren't grouped up quite as much. So, you know, you're just fishing shallow, covering water, fishing stuff that looks good. And uh, man, a lot of quality bites uh, uh, up the lake, you know, from Hurricane Deck Bridge all the way up to Truman Dam, a lot of quality bites. And then when you get to uh, Truman Dam, you know, you're fishing uh, current, you know, it's like a river up there. They're dumping a lot of water out of Truman. So you're fishing eddies, current breaks, backs at, uh, back in the creeks on some of that cover and around the shad. And uh, fishing like that's really, really fun. I haven't been up quite that far, but uh, love doing that. And uh, you know, it, it's a fun way to fish. It's a little bit different than fishing down lake here. Uh, so the next couple weeks, expect those fish to, you know, really start uh, some of these schools of fish that are out here are going to start breaking up. You know, some of these deeper fish are going to start moving slightly shallower. They're going to start suspending uh, over really deep water or uh, moving under some of these boat docks and utilizing the cover around them. But uh, the baits are going to remain the same. Uh, shaky heads, Texas rigs, um, you know, 10 inch worms, creature baits, all gonna be really good. The night fishing should pick up. You know, we've got a lot of local tournaments here that uh, take place in the evenings and at night, and we usually see some pretty big weights. So night fishing can be really fun. Um, you know, we, we, li we like to fish a little bit shallower at night, uh, fish around brush piles, lighted boat docks, and that, can, that bite should be really fun. Uh, the color of the lake right now, uh, you know, a little bit of stain to it, which, which I really like, it lets you get away with a variety of baits uh, and the fish are biting a variety of stuff. They're, they're biting lake wide. We've been going out on our guide trips and catching, you know, between uh, 30 to 50 fish most days. And, uh, you know, a lot of little ones, a lot of big ones. So they're all kind of mixed together when we catch them and uh, really just staying on the move. These fish have been moving a lot. Uh, like they tend to do for me on this lake uh, quite a bit. And we've been fishing over uh, lots of different areas of the lake, uh, but one or two things have, have remained the same. Bottom baits have been the best. We've been varying our weights based on how deep we've been fishing. Uh, green pumpkins, black and blues, and uh, you know, really those two colors have been producing just 
based on the water clarity and uh, you know shaky heads jigs have been a real go-to for us uh, the finesse baits have been getting bit light line has been getting bit um, and some of these uh, crank baits and funner baits like that uh, real power baits I should say uh, have been producing as well so it's kind of kind of pick your poison get out there cover some water and uh, hold on because the fish are really really biting so uh, you know got a few guide trips available uh, here in July and uh, definitely got some stuff available in, in August as well so if you're wanting to book a trip uh, I'll, I'll drop a link below and uh, uh, a link to all my sponsors products that we mentioned here today. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe the video if you like the content. And until next time, good luck out there. I hope you guys catch a big one. Uh, fishing should be good. So we'll see you next time.